Welcome back to the Starting Strength Series. Appreciate you guys watching us occasionally. On the, on the rare occasions we are able to snag a decent guest, we uh, uh, appreciate having you guys along. Uh, today we are indeed fortunate to have Dan John with us. Uh, Dan is uh, certainly one of the most respected names in our little corner of the industry, and he's made the uh, long trip out here from the uh, Bay Area, his new home, to uh, be with us for a little while today, and we're going to talk about all kinds of things. Dan, thank you very thank much you. for coming. Thanks a lot. So, where are you now, and why? I'm in Burlingame, California, because uh, my wife, there was this great promotion coming up for Treasury, and she said, I just got to get my name out there. You know, I want, so I'm not qualified, so I'll just get my name out there. I said, hey, that's a great idea. For yeah. Treasury? Uh, Department of Treasury. Oh, I see. She works for them. And okay. uh, so right. she... she it's all government talk. Yeah, so she applied for this job, and uh, around April she called me up and says, you know, I have some good news. I, I, I go, what's that? She goes, well, I, I got the promotion. I, I said, that's great. I, I got some bad news. What? I have to be in San Francisco on June 2nd. <laughs> and this day was when? Was he... April. So oh, we right. had, I'm the head track, I was the head track coach at the school. My daughter was going to go on to win the state championship in the shot put, take second in the discus. My other daughter was going to graduate from junior college. Lindsay was going to graduate from high school, baccalaureate, plus move. Now, we had a six-bedroom, three-bath house, huge gym, to a two-bedroom, two-bath place, move three states, get our daughters into their own place, all in about... <laughs> about that's it seemed rather, like about 24 hours. It was a compressed like, experience in yeah. life change, huh? When the when the movers yeah. came, they came a day early. <laughs> At least they showed up. That's right. And so uh, they, they took everything. Up. And so my wife and I spent the last four days in Utah on an inflatable bed in an empty house, <laughs> uh, just finishing details. So. It was. It was great. But the place is fabulous. I love the Bay Area. Uh, it's. It's cooler there than it is uh, in Wichita Falls. And and Salt Lake. Yeah. You see the glistening. Forehead. That's right. I'm not used to the yes, we're humidity. Kind of, we're kind yes. of humid and warm yes. here at the first of no of uh, what is this September, September yeah. here in Wichita Falls. Uh, what are you doing now? What are you do? Have you since you're not a high school coach anymore? I'm assuming yeah. Yeah. in 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 California. What exactly consumes your time? Sure. Well, I'm still a, uh, I teach online uh, for a university, and I still I'm still teaching religious studies online, but then. Um, I made a decision to to finish up some of these projects. So, right now uh, we're just finishing up a book with Pavel, and I'm, I think it's be great. You're tell us about that. Okay. A little preview of that. Sure. Do you want now or? Well, let's go ahead. Okay. And then uh, I'm writing a, a book for Larry Draper right now, and then I'm I'm knocking off a bunch of articles. And, and we need to talk about the Drapers. Or oh, great people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's mostly writing. <coughs> and then the other thing I decided to do is. I had been up to four and five jobs, literally, uh, for years, and now I'm down to, um, I'm writing and I'm doing the college work, and then I'm donating a lot of time. I'm, I'm, one of the little goals I've had is to anybody in the area who wants help, I'm just kind of driving over and help any way I can. Uh, just young coaches and stuff, anything I can help with, and athletes, and I just decided to kind of, I'm still earning a lot of money with all the stuff I do. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, it's nice to not have to, when the bell goes off at 8 o'clock, uh, I, I can come out and do something like this. Right. Almost every weekend I'm off giving workshops, and, uh, almost every weekend now. And so that's working out very nicely for me. Well, I'm glad the bills are getting paid. Uh, yeah. That's It's yeah. nice to be able, because if you got that and all this other stuff you're doing, make an actual contribution back to the community, yeah. actually just doable. Well, people, point. you know, I have a mission statement. <clears throat> it's, it's, I've had it for a long time. It's, it's, it's called make a difference, and I've been. It's kind of. It's funny. My wife will some will make a decision and be like, "Well, did you make a difference?" And I'll go, "Oh, you know, yeah, okay, you're right." Because sometimes <laughs> I'll do something I hate doing, but maybe I change the kid's life doing it. Yeah. You, you didn't want to do it, right? No. But did you make a difference? Ooh, you got me again. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's. I'm well, let's hear about the book, Dan. Well, the one with Pavel uh, is. Uh, it's funny, we sat down at this, uh, when I became an RKC, a Russian kettlebell certified instructor, I uh, did it in San Jose, and Pavel asked, would you talk for half an hour? And he said, uh, well, what's the role of a strength coach? Well, <laughs> pretty easy. Uh, the role of the strength coach is to make people stronger. 
I'm, I'm, I think I think I summarized. Fairly straightforward. I think I summarized. Well, I don't know if I could talk for an hour on that. You right. know, but then I was kind of quizzing him, and I was kind of confused. And someone said, "Well, what's the impact of the strength coach?" Well, well, well the now there is a different. Now topic. the impact, it can be zero. You could have the best. I mean, we could we could be the two best strength coaches in the world, and we're working with those kids right there, and we lose every football game. <laughs> we're the worst <laughs> wrestling program in the world, you know. It, it could happen. Right. Then, well, on the other hand, we could be we the, get two, a guy. the two worst. We do everything wrong, and we win the state championships in five right. sports. Or we take a kid with no development of his potential, and hand him a college education. That's true. Or we take an older person. Yeah. who can't get up off the toilet without using their hands. And even more important, hand them most of their life back. Right. So we can make a so, varying so the degree impact, of contribution. The impact right. is, well, and so that's where we started. And then from there, we started to really think about, uh, I, I worked a lot on this. W then we took the model, for example, in the, uh, I'm, I'm more of a sports guy, but, you know, you could be, it's, Pretty fuzzy how uh, a strength coach can help a football team. Now you wait, wait, wait. Every college kid, yeah, every Division One athlete is a stud. Well, oh, really? So, <laughs> so if you have 1.5 million football players right. and only 500 to 1,000 maybe get scholarships, full rides. Right. Yeah, you know the the numbers are working pretty good. You know, I I don't mind working with six foot four, two hundred and thirty pound kids who can run four or five forties. In fact, I'm a great coach when I have well, those guys. Yeah. If you've got, in fact, I'm phenomenal. If you've coach. got great athletes, yeah. you end up being looked at as a great coach. Pretty good coach. Yeah. And so we started to work on where certain things, and all of a sudden, it really now for someone who's just in the uh, who's like a personal trainer of fitness. I mean, the great the great insight and all and all. Here's a million dollar thing for all you. Bless you. Your congrats. If if Edna comes in and she says, "I want to lose some body fat and feel better," well, why don't you just, I don't know, help her lose some body fat and help her joints be more mo mobile? That's what she wants. Mm -hmm. But if you blow her shoulder out doing some weird gymnastic, kind of a weird inappropriate, inappropriate. I mean, seriously. If okay, if you just have a kettlebell and they do, uh, and you teach her kettlebell swings to burn fat and like the goblet squat to make the hips feel better, well, that's that's pretty good. Uh, if you have her do treadmills mixed with some presses, and she feels better and loses that body fat, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so what the I think the the whole the big one of the big pictures of the book and there's several is let us let us work with the goal set that we're supposed to have. You know, I've heard many times, I, I, I coached in programs, we're the best conditioned team out there. We got beat 65 to nothing. <laughs> no one cares that we could, we could out-jog them. You're just not good football we're players. We're not good football players. <laughs> and so it's to really stick with the goal set that the people have. And then the other big part, and this is the part that Pavel likes, is in the, it's called the what-the-heck effect. Sometimes we'll do something and it'll be a small little addition, and yet <laughs> six weeks later, you're stronger, you're faster, you're leaner, you're better. And then, of course, it's the reverse engineering. It's to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. What was that? And I think that's the, Pavel's great strength is his ability to reverse engineer things. He, he looks at something and goes, okay, this is like this. You know, so that right. that's those are the two things. The what the heck effect underutilized, but really important. Right. I've talked to Pavel once, and uh, I've talked to you about this. Uh, well, I had one conversation with him. We were on an interview together at one point, and um, well, we were on the phone together for probably a total of an hour, and our interaction was minimal. But uh, my impression is that Pavel has been an extremely underutilized resource because he uh, he knows a lot more than kettlebells and I don't know if he's done this himself or the industry has just pigeonholed him into this one yeah. particular specialty but talking to Pavel this man knows his shit and I really hope that yeah. that your book with him yeah. exposes uh, the people in our industry to an aspect of Pavel that they haven't seen before. Oh yeah, just just simple things like the hinge that the, we, we talked about earlier with the Olympic lifts. You know, 
you know, if we can, if I can take this athlete and teach them five or six different ways of doing the hinge motion, you're going to teach it with the squat and the, maybe the deadlift. Maybe walk over and do snatches and cleans over here. Maybe I'll t do the swing. Maybe we'll just work on jumping one day. But it's all the same movement. The, the, I think the strength of Pavel is he looks at all those things and then he tries to find the simplest path. Mm -hmm. What's the simplest way to What's teach the, it? What wrench fits this nut the best? Yeah, and I think, uh, and you know, it's funny about kettlebells is like, you know, we're, we've been in this industry a long time. Everybody is looking for the next wave. Mm -hmm. And so right. ke the kettlebell is a tool, just in the same way as a great Olympic bar is a tool. Uh, let's be honest, the sleds are... Pro Sleds and prowlers are probably better for most people. Well, I, We've got a prowl. We have two prowlers now. We just got them about a year ago. How long have you known about the prowler? Just out of curiosity. Well, we used to call it cars. We used to right, push we cars. Car, push cars. Same thing. Yeah. But the the idea of and we used to push cars twenty years ago. And yeah. Everything. I like the prowler because. It's new. It's exciting. It's yeah. it's easy to get there people interested in doing. I'm going to put my car down the street. That gets old and stuff. But I'm using the prowler. Exactly. I I talked to Wendler about this. Those guys are selling a bunch of prowlers right. now, and they're really, really a useful tool. We put I agree. just damn near everybody at the gym is pushing the prowler now because it's such a rapid conditioning effect, and it doesn't make you sore. Right. It doesn't kill anything else and therefore interfere with the rest of your training like I've, a bunch of I've this never had Metcon a, stuff does. I've you know? never had an injury with uh, hill sprints. I've never ever I had. I have. Really? I tore a calf. You know. Oh, okay. I'm old. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm old. Yeah, but I tore The, just the tore thing the about the hill sprint out of a gas rock, is that. that even an athlete with terrible sprinting technique mm -hmm. is going to sprint up a hill correctly. And yeah, it's that's, also, that's a good point. And the other thing, too, is if it is a hill like this, is that up here when they're tired, they're going to slow down. With prowlers, you've got the and sleds. Is when they're, in a sense, up here, they're mm -hmm. not going to get themselves hurt. I mean, my, I, I have not had an injury on a sled or a prowler. But but the right. point is, for most mine is the only one I know of. Yeah, by the way, well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> you, you win. Yeah, you, good, <laughs> good. Uh, those are, you know those are probably better tools for what most people want. It's just, you know. You're not going to see them in, in the most gyms. You're not going to see them in right, what right. people call gyms. Right. You know, they can't the, be worked into the program at 24-hour fitness. Well, and now where do you put them? Where do you put them? And then, it, it, boy, they're going to make noise. They're going to scuff oh, up the gosh. floor. And I'm not people being a jerk. People might get sweaty. I'm not being a jerk because, yeah. you know. Um, well, go ahead and be a jerk. Well, well, let's talk about the fitness industry okay. while we're over here. Are we through talking about the book? I think I get a taste of what the book there's is. There's a lot more. We'll get. We'll get. We'll, we'll, bring well, let's come back to it we'll when it happens.